On this 2006 Hummer H3, we're going to show you the Roadmaster XL base plate kit, part number 2505-1. Alright, this is what the base plate looks like when it's installed on our Hummer. These are our attachment points for your tow bar. These attach points are actually removable. They have a safety cable that goes between this attachment point and eventually to your tow bar, and also to the base plate itself. I'll go ahead and take this one apart real fast so you can see how it comes apart. All right, to take it apart, we'll take our quick link off. We'll get that loosened up. Pull this pin in our clip, pull it apart. This whole assembly can be removed. So when your vehicle is not being towed behind the RV, it has a much cleaner look. This tab will line up with this tab here. That way you can add a small lock to it to help it keep it secure. Now the attachment points removed, there's not much to see but the receiver braces themselves. Now these receiver braces do have a powder coat finish to help protect the metal. And they go up underneath the bumper here. Also some modifications to the skid shield and it bolts up to the frame. What's nice about this is that it uses all existing holes in the frame, no drilling required. Aside from this, these two parts here, there's also a crossbar that comes with the kit as well. With this base plate, a good match for it with this vehicle will be part number RM-520, the Roadmaster Falcon tow bar. Next, we'll go ahead and show you how we installed the base plate. First up, we'll go ahead and remove a rivet that holds the fender liner to the frame. That's this one right here on our driver's side. There's a small slot for a screwdriver. You can pop it in there and work up the centers. And then pull the whole thing out. On our passenger side, it's actually at the top of the fender liner here. So we'll go ahead and remove it. Now the, the rock guard here gets temporarily removed. There'll be four bolts, two here, and there's two at the bottom. However, on this vehicle here, we only got one on the bottom. To remove these bolts, we'll need a 13 millimeter socket. Okay, we'll go ahead. next we'll move on to the sway bar here. We just have to loosen up these mounts. There's a bolt here and here, you, and we'll use a 10 millimeter socket. This is our driver's side. We'll do the same thing on the passenger side, and just allow it to hang down from its remaining attachment points. At this point, our H3 is ready to install the base plate hardware. We have a four and a half inch long bolt and it's two by three plate. We're also gonna add some red Loctite to it and get it ready to install. Pull back the fender liner, take our bolt, run it through the opening here. It's right next to the body mount and now through the frame. Now we can go ahead and put one of the receiver braces up into place. This is the one for the passenger side. We'll tilt this corner up into the frame like this, and then rotate it up alongside the frame. We'll pull this bolt back out just a little bit and then run it through the brace on the other side. And then we'll loosely install for now a half inch lock washer and nut. Take a look at our plate here. It slides up alongside the frame and just inside of the radiator. Moving on towards the front of the of vehicle, towards the bumper on the frame, we need to install two more four and a half inch long bolts. These will install from this direction. So we'll push the plate up, line up with the hole, and run through the outside of the frame. There's one more all the way up towards the front of the bumper. You have to kind of reach in and push it through. There. Now it's really hard to see, so you kind of got to go by feel for that to run through the frame. Before we install these bolts into the frame, we'll also add some Loctite to these guys as well. Pretty much all our hardware will get Loctite applied to them. This component right here is next up. These two holes go over bolts we just put into place, and these two holes will line up with these two threaded holes on the receiver brace. After a brace is in place, on the bolts we'll add a lock washer and a nut. And of course the one closest to the bumper, you have to go by feel. Now we'll install the fasteners for these two holes here. Now we need to use the inch and a half long bolts 
for this purpose here. There's some shorter ones in there, so don't get them mixed up. So our bolt and a lock washer and some Loctite, put these guys together. One's done, same one on this one. We'll take a break from this side and we'll go ahead and repeat the same process we did on our passenger side here. We'll do that over on the driver's side. Now if both braces installed, still loose, we need to install this cross brace. This will fit on top of the braces with these two tabs. Okay. Now we'll use the shortest of our bolts right here. We're going through here. The crossbar already has threads installed in it, so we just run these together. One, two, and same thing on the other side. Now I can go ahead and put our sway bar back into place. The kit comes with new hardware to replace the factory hardware. Flat washer, lock washer, and a bolt. Driver's side is done, one more time on the passenger side. To help us install the hardware, I'm using a 17 millimeter socket. All right, now at this point, all our hardware is installed, so we can go ahead and tighten down and torque the bolts down as specified in the instructions. We'll start with our sway bar bolt, and this will be the same on both sides of the vehicle. Okay, now we'll do the other side the same way, and then we'll do our crossbar. Before we put a rock guard back up in place, we gotta cut open this material here and here to make room for the braces. You can use a reciprocating saw like I got here, or hand saw, or cutting wheel. Now you do want to do a series of tests that see how much material you have to cut out. Around the area, around the bolts here, we had to cut out a pretty good section for it, for it to go up and around and over. It'd be a good idea to keep the cuts not so tight around the components. It'll make it easier to take it off and on when you do maintenance on the vehicle. Now, at this point, our base plate is fully installed on the vehicle. Couple of last details is our safety chains. They go from our base plate. We'll eventually go ahead and connect up to your tow bar. So we're just gonna use to provide a quick link, put that into place, and then our cable, and then tighten it up. At this point, we'll go ahead and put our attachments for our tow bar. In the instructions, they call these the weldments. They just go into place, line up these two tabs right here. You can put a lock in there to secure it in place. Then we'll install the pin and a clip on the other side. And with that, our install is complete. If you're going to leave, our, if you're going to leave the weldments or attachment points in place, it might be a good idea to simply zip tie these up here for now. Or you can take this whole assembly back loose if you'd like. And now finish it for the Roadmaster XL base plate kit, part number 2505-1 on this 2006 Hummer H3.